All right. So now we're going to jump into our slide deck. Now we don't have a lot of slides, but I want to make sure that since this is an introduction to SSRS, that we cover some of the basic items, assuming that most of you don't have the experience or have never opened bids. Now, the first question we have here is, what is SQL Server Reporting Services? Well, Reporting Services is part of Microsoft's business intelligence suite of products. It's a comprehensive server-based reporting solution, and it can be used to author and manage and even deliver interactive dashboard-style and traditional-style reports. Now, it, with reports, they can get their data from a variety of data sources. So you can use any OLADB or ODBC compliant databases such as Access, Oracle, and even DB2. Now, for organizations and individuals, they need to have the capability to display their data. And you want to display this data that's going to be in a standardized way that is facilitating decision making. So there should be a variety of reports that we have and we need to be able to have a consistent way to share that information. We also need to be able to access this, uh, the, the reports. So we should be able to access them from a variety of applications, locations, and even devices. Well, for example, we might want to embed it in a SharePoint site or some other Windows application. Okay, it sounds like we had another uh, or maybe a couple other people that joined our call. So if you don't mind, make sure you go ahead and mute your mics. If you have any questions, ask it in the chat box of your GoToMeeting menu, or you can unmute yourself and ask. Okay, so the first question is, why do you want to use reporting services? Well, I say it's free, and I guess technically it's not free, but it does come with SQL Server. So if your company has already purchased SQL Server, then you do own a license for reporting services. Now, you might need more licenses for reporting services depending on how many developers that you have working on reports. Um, if that's a question that you have, then you'll probably want to speak to a Microsoft representative. You also have access to great tools for building dashboards um, like graphs and charts and gauges. So all these are built in as well as some newer features like sparklines, maps, and data bars that are available in R2. So you have a couple different options when it comes to installation. So the first one that you have is native mode. In native mode, you'll have reporting services is an application on your report server, and all the processes are ran through reporting services components, and it doesn't depend on SharePoint. It has its own standalone configuration and its own standalone manager where you'll be able to manage everything in reporting services. Now, the other option that you have is native mode with SharePoint web parts. So you can have native mode installed, but you use SharePoint for display, uh, displaying your reports. The, now, the, one of the other kind of installation options is the um, installation of SharePoint integrated mode. And it's deployed as part of SharePoint products. Now, this is really a great way to handle your reports. It's going to be a little more complex to do so, but you'll have more tables, and they'll... Um, the, the, those tables are created when you are setting up your report server database for SharePoint integrated. So you'll have more tables and your databases will be a little bit bigger. So if you have um, SharePoint, or maybe not SharePoint right now, but if you at some point in the future think that your company could use SharePoint, you don't have to worry about installing it or setting it up right now because you can do that down the road. Now, one of the other options that's not listed on here is Performance Point. And with Performance Point, you can have native mode for your installation of reporting services, and then you can use Performance Point to display your report parts. So what have been some of the changes that have been made in SSRS 2008? Well, one of the first ones is that in 2008, it's independent of IIS, which is Internet Information Services. So previously in 2005, it was dependent on you having IIS running on your machine. And this is probably one of the biggest improvements in reporting services. It's not dependent on another internet protocol and it's completely based as its own entity. Now with that being said, if you choose SharePoint integrated, you'll still be required to have IIS. You also have easier configuration, you have better resource management, and you only have one service to manage. And what I mean by that is that you have um, 
Report Server Web Service, Report Server Windows Service, and Report Manager are now rolled into Report Server Service. You also have several deployment obstacles that have been eliminated, and it's leveraging the SQL Server's networking stack and the HTTP.sys. And one of the other exciting things that have happened is that uh, there's been some report engine modification and report processing is not on demand. So what's happening is when you are basically when you're rendering your report, it's only grabbing that first page of data and bringing it back. So if you have, I don't know, let's just say five pages for your report, but you're only viewing the first page, it's only bringing data for that first page and not the other four. Same thing happens with expressions. It's only uh, basically uh, processing those expressions for the page that you're viewing. And lastly, uh, we've had some new Microsoft, we have a new Microsoft Word renderer and a new Word export option. So I wanted to give everybody a quick heads up about some of the new R2 features. Uh, we have some new toolbox items like gauges, sparklines, maps, indicators, and the report part gallery. This is going to allow us to publish specific report items instead of the actual whole report. And that could apply to your data regions, your charts, or any other object that you you have in your report, and that, that can actually be reused by others uh, in their own reports. You have Report Builder 3.0, which is um, a big step up from Report Builder 2.0, because what this is going to do is allow those end users of Report Builder 3.0 to use those, uh, those report parts that you've deployed individually. And we're, like I said, we're going to talk about that on, I think it's day four that we're going to talk about Report Builder. All right, so what we have here is our client, our report server, and our SQL server. Now the client is a user, and that could be an application or a process that's requesting the report. Next you have your report server, and let me make sure my Zoom It tool is on, which it's not. It's fine, I'm going to turn that on real quick. Oh, uh, one second everybody, if you could bear with me. Okay, let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we have our client. Uh, there we go. Our client, our report server, and our SQL server. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the report server is being played by the reporting services service. And then you have the data that the reports are going to run a query against. And that could be um, maybe your SQL server, your Oracle database, or even DB2.